Do we have any Muhammadan? Oh. Well, look like we don't have customers for today. I hope you guys you enjoy the timing. We will try to do more in such a time in the future. And I'm trying my best to, you know, to like uh, make the time mix between here and there. So we can have people from different territories and areas in the world, they can join us. Anyone have any question about the topic we mentioned today? So guys, are you able to recognize who is Allah? Allah, according to the conclusion, Allah has no balls. Allah, he wrote a tablet because he can. Allah, he need to remember. Why Allah, he created the pen to write the tablet? He don't want to get tired. <laughs> Why Allah he wrote the Torah by his hand but not the Quran? All those questions Muslims cannot answer because it, this is just a, a mix of silly, stupid legions together. Muhammad, he, he, you know, he heard the stories and he put them together and then the Muslims, they have to survive with it. Maybe next time we go live, Muslims will have the balls to call me and tell me Allah has balls. No, I'm serious, you know, I'm not joking. If you ask any Muhammad, then what is the gender of Allah? They will not dare to answer. They will not dare to answer. They will not dare to say even he have no gender. You see, the Quran keeps saying he. The Quran saying how can he have a son if he doesn't have a girlfriend? It doesn't say how he can have a son if he is not a human. It doesn't say how can he have a son if he is not physical. No. It says how he, which is a word used for male, can have a son without having a girlfriend. So the verse is so clear. He is a male and he needs a girlfriend and that will make him able to have a son. Without the girlfriend, he cannot have a son. Very simple. He the word he is not a metaphorical no more. Same time, I mean, why he need to use it anyway? I mean, can't Allah, who Muslims claim that he is above languages, cannot he present himself without saying he? There's no replacement for he? Hmm? The God of the Bible, you know, is so clear. God created Adam in his image. In his image, we created him. That's it. Very simple. But because Muhammad is a thief, he copies stories from the Bible and those made the problems, big problems for the Muhammadan. Muhammad, he copied the story of the virgin birth of Jesus. But this is a big problem. Because why only Jesus? What is the point of this miracle? Nothing. Your mother, she can claim that she was virgin. My mother, she can claim that she was virgin when she gave birth to me. But this will be useless. Only in Christianity, the virgin birth of Jesus is making sense. In Islam, it doesn't make sense. What for? Who, who witnessed the miracle? I mean, what is that? How you can prove it or disapprove it? A woman, she is given baby, that's it. And why? Why only Jesus is born of a virgin? There's no other person in the whole universe. The Quran is a stupid. He says that Jesus is the same as Adam. No, he's not. Adam is created from mud. Jesus is not. The Muslim is said, "You will. Adam is not. Uh, Adam is not born. You idiot. The only one is born. He have no father physically, by sex. Is Jesus. And the Quran says, وَجَعَلْنَاهُ نَسَبًا وَصَهْرًا.'" What does that mean? Every human being after Adam is coming from sexual intercourse and marriage. Every human being after Adam. And this is contradiction for the story of Jesus. Muhammad, he forgot that already he accepted that Jesus was born of a virgin. He created every human being from water and has granted them ties of a blood as well as marriage. Translation is not accurate, but 
we will go with it. And by the way, the same verse, if you read it, you will see in the interpretation saying that you can have sex with your daughter from your blood if she is not a daughter from marriage because Islam considers only marriage as a lineage of a blood. Only marriage. So if you have a daughter, she is not from marriage. Islam forbid you from having sex with a daughter. Let's make it clear. But a daughter from marriage. If you have a daughter from a girlfriend, you can have sex with your daughter and her girl and, and you and her mother, which is your girlfriend, same time. She's not your daughter. A child is born from a, a, a illegal sexual relationship cannot inherit the name of the father, the money of the father, or a child support, period. And will not be forbidden the Muslim man from having sex with his own child. If you don't believe me, open al to be right now and read it. Go ahead. Any Muslim, I challenge you all. Chapter 25, verse number 54. So, the, 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 you know, at the end, Muslim, they say Islam is against fornication. Islam is religion of fornication. In fact, there is no punishment of having sex with your mother. It's forbidden for you to have sex with your mother. But what if you do? No punishment. And I can show you the reference. No punishment for having sex with the daughter, with the mother, with the sister, with the aunt, with the grandmother. No punishment. Zero. لا حد علي. This is what? the most accurate opinion says that is Islam so they do not know who is Allah they do not know what they worship they just worship names and ideas and the main point of this garbage cult is Muhammad they worship Muhammad they don't care really for Allah you see you will see Muslims they go crazy because you insult Muhammad but if you insult Allah nobody cares in the Middle East, you say the F word to Allah day and, and night. In the street, nobody get angry. Nobody. You hear it in the street, F Allah, F Allah, F Allah. Nobody get angry. But you don't see anyone saying F Muhammad because they will kill you. Because they worship Muhammad. But those days are changing. And now everybody is F in Muhammad in the Middle East. Sound like it. From their fruits, you shall know them. I want to say thank you all for being here and please leave your comment and I would like to see some Christians sharing with us in the comment refuting the Muslims I like to see Christian learning how to argue and get Muhammad and busted like if you remember there is a comment it says the Christianity will make sense if the Christians the Old Testament mentioned the name uh, the Trinity mentioned the name of Jesus how come Adam did not mention Jesus? How come Abraham did not mention? How come Moses? Uh, if you go and read the comment, you will see how stupid the one who wrote it. Because we can use his logic against their own. First of all, who said it does not mention? The name Yeshua is the name of God. It's coming from the name of God. Do you know what Yeshua means? Go, go search in Google. Search in Hebrew and you will see what does that exactly mean. So each time you say God, you are saying Yeshua. Each time you say Yeshua, you are saying God. So Abraham, he worship Yeshua. Adam, he worship Yeshua. Moses, he worship Yeshua. Jesus said, I am, I am, I am. Moses, he said, what I will tell my people, what I will say to them. Jesus, the Messiah, he says, I am the living God. I am the truth. I am the way. I am the resurrection. And no one can go to the Father but by me. So they say, how come never mentioned? Who said it's not mentioned? And now we ask you, how come Moses never mentioned the Kaaba? How come Moses never mentioned Allah? How come Abraham? Where we can find the name of Allah in, in the Bible? A Muslim might say to you, in the translation of the Indonesian, in the Arabic translation for the Bible, those are false translation. Allah nowhere to be found in the scriptures. So they are asking how come the name of Jesus did not appear in the Old Testament? which is false, but in fact, never mention 
the name of Allah. Never mention any of Islamic names. Even Muhammad could not even quote the name of the Messiah correctly. So their logic can be used always against them. Just think carefully before you answer back. You know? Other guy he said, Well, the Jews never worship anyone beside Allah. The Jews are monotheists like, like Muslims, not like you Christians. But isn't it the Quran said? So I said, Okay, hold on. So the Jews never did. The same as the, the stupid Mimi Hijab he said to David Wood. But David Wood was not, you know, is not good in debating, so he did not get him busted right away. The Quran says, Uzair is the son of Allah. The Jews, they say so. When Mimi Hijab, he said, not a single Jew, not a single Jew believe that God has a son. That's the Quran. The Jews believe, all of them, that Uzair have a son, uh, Uzair is son of Allah, and the Christian believe that Messiah, and by the way, neither the Jews, neither the Christian, believe in Allah anyway. And we don't believe that there's someone, we cannot even find the word Uzair in the Bible. Where? Who is Uzair? Not a single time can be found. And not a single Jew remember anything about worshipping. And look at the translation, by the way, is a lie. They say Ezra. There is no such a name. In Arabic, it says Uzair. This is why you have to be careful when the Muhammadan they translate, they lie. They change name, they switch name. So they can't find a place for you to believe in something is not there. Nowhere it says Isra. This is Uzair. Uzair. Look what they say. Isra. There is no such a thing. Same time, even Isra, there is not there. Uh, uh, this is a priest. It is Uzair. How Uzair became Isra? There is a huge difference. But are you saying to me that even the Jew, that the Muhammad, he called the name and Allah called the name wrong? If the Jews call him Ezra, then why you stupid you call him Uzair? I mean, even when they try to bend words, even that is a proof to us that Islam cannot be from God. Are you saying to me that your God got the name wrong? He's quoting the Jews wrong? Because if the Jews believe in, uh, in Ezra, then they say Ezra. Why you say Uzair? This is how stupid this cult is. However, stupid cult always can find stupid followers, like any cult in the world. You will hear men who they claim to be prophet of God today, and even they claim to be Christians, and they claim that they prophesy, and they are prophet, and people believe in them. And those prophets, they collect money, donation, wealth over the poor ones. We do not need prophets. No more prophet to come. I can prophesy in the name of God, but does not not make me prophet. I can prophesy based on the Bible says God, he said this, but I cannot claim to be prophet. We do not need prophet. Those are false people trying to fool you. Always remember, a person he claimed to be a prophet of God. What he will give us beside the scriptures? Isn't it the Bible says that he'll be cursed? The one who bring other than these scriptures? Is that correct, people? Isn't it the Bible says, let him be cursed, the one who bring other than these scriptures? The answer is yes. So if somebody claiming to be a prophet, then he have to bring scriptures. And if he does so, then he is cursed. Are you with me? Do you understand what I'm saying? If I am prophet, true prophet, then I will receive scriptures. But the Bible says clearly, let him be cursed the one who bring other than this scripture so this is the last there's no more scriptures that's it there's no scriptures after this there's no more bibles there's no more quran there's no stupid no no that's it so this is how you know from the beginning that anyone who claimed to be a prophet he is a scam 
it's a big business but always you will find a bunch of fools who someone smarter than them he can fool them he take their money he rip their wealth and even he sleep with their women and the example is Muhammad so let him be cursed the one who bring other than this is scriptures for us as a Christians there is no scriptures to follow to listen to from anyone no prophet except the scriptures we have in our hands so don't fall into their false claims and even if somebody by the way mentions something will happen in the future and happened that doesn't change anything because it can happen even by mistake I say something it happened it can happen why not and remember even the Messiah warned us that even they would do miracles Shaitan Satan is powerful he can support them and he will support them don't listen to them again from their fruits you shall know them a person who asks for your money your wealth and your uh, maybe your women obviously he is a cult leader he is a scam you will you will notice that all the disciples of Jesus they were poor they were very humble they don't have slaves and servants they don't own horses and you know glory they were very poor people they work hard to support themselves to feed themselves if we compare between those who claim to be today serving God and this the story of each one of those disciples or even the, the early church father you will see we can't even compare people today who work in religion they are rich they are filthy rich they live in palaces they drive the most expensive cars yet they claim that they are serving God if I want to claim to be a priest or a, a prophet like Muhammad then I should be devoting my life for the sake of the service not having too many women in my bed and taking the fifth from the booty and you cannot see me unless you pay me that is not a man of God a man of God he work for free the Lord will provide him a man of God he asked for no wealth what what Jesus said if you cannot be a servant you cannot be a master when he washed the feet they said to him, Lord, we will not let you wash the feet. He said, if you don't let me, you don't know, I don't know you. You don't know me. I don't want you. If you cannot be a servant, you can't be. So a servant in Christianity is a master and a master is servant. Today, we have people who need drivers who claim to be priests, drive fancy cars, the same as the Sheikh, the same as Muhammad, wealth, richness, women, a lot of the glory of the men today all of this because he claimed that he is serving God but the truth is a servant of God he will never seek any of those things uh, what about a church tradition of a church father being practice and what are you talking about RCC I'm not sure what does that mean and Agabi you are back you always make stupid comment uh, we don't care about tradition we are talking about people seeking tradition seeking glory the men individual seeking glory for their own benefit either money or property or all kind of benefit which have nothing to do with God Jesus never get paid for resurrecting people from death for healing people same as the disciple you don't get paid you don't sign contract with people to if you want us to serve in your church then you pay us if you want me to make a seminar in your church then how much you will pay me this is not God work People who serve God will never even mention the money. 
when they serve you. People they give, this is their gift. It is their gift. But you don't go and say, I will not do this unless you pay me. That obviously is a businessman. So the disciple of Christ and the church father, they were serving the people, the poor, before the rich. The poor before the rich. The one who was not able to walk, he was not a rich man. He was a beggar in the street. Jesus made him walk. The blind man is the same. Those are not worthy rich. Even when he helped the rich person, he did not get paid. What the Lord said, from their fruits you shall know them, is the best way to know anyone. Those who seek a reward, yet they claim that they are serving God, they are not serving God. They are serving the reward. You are what you seek. The one who seeks God, you know, the Lord will provide you. The Lord is a provider. And if he is a person who believes in God, God will help. God will not let you go down. So why they are putting conditions and asking for money? And this is how we know that Muhammad is false. He favored himself by sex. Favored himself even above the Islamic law. Like the Muslim, they can have four. He can have unlimited wives. The Muslim, they have to have witnesses for marriage. You don't need witnesses. Which means it's adultery. Because in Islam, if you don't have witnesses for the marriage, it is a fornication. Who will the privilege Muhammad, if his eyes fall into a woman, her husband must divorce her. It's a clear evidence that he is a cult leader. He is a sexual predator. Can you give me advice? My name is Muhammad. I accepted Jesus, Christ our Lord, our Savior. My friend, I don't know what advice I can give you. Good for you first. I'm happy for you that you become Christian and you live the cult of Muhammad. But if you can help me to tell me and tell me what do you want me, what kind of advice you are seeking, my friend? Advice in what? You know, life, life is full of issues. So what is the advice you are looking for? You need to help me. But as a new Christian, if you are a new, the advice is, the first thing you should do, don't try to understand Christ based in your background as a Muslim. Because the Muslim don't have the same Christ. The Christ in Islam is totally different person. Totally. It's just a toy, you know, a display. Like we put him in the table for some time. He made some show in the circus, like, you know, he, he walked in the water, he raised people from death. Oh, sure, it's a short time. And then his, his duty is over. That is not our Christ. So never try to understand Christianity based on your background as a Muslim. Because everything you learn about Jesus in Islam is absolutely false. Same time, don't think about words we have in the Bible the same way you think about it in the Quran. As an example, fornication is a word used by both. But in Islam, fornication does not mean fornication. As an example, they call it marriage. You do muta, they call it marriage. You, call, you do the wajah friend, they call it marriage. You sleep with women for one night, you know, you just bring two witnesses just for fun, and they call it marriage. This is a fornication. So we might use the same words as in the dictionary, but we don't have the same meaning. I hope you understand. And I see even some many Christians, they are confused they think when, as an example, Muhammad, he said genie, the Christian, they think he is talking about demon. Muslims don't believe in demon, and genies are not demon. Genies are not spirit. 
they are creatures, fiction creatures created from fire, and they have a penis and a vagina, and they have sex and they eat. So we need to filter many and wrong understanding, like many naive Christian think that uh, Ishmael is the father of the Arab, which is absolutely false. Big false. But they heard that someone said it once in a church, and then they are the same as the Muslim copy-paste. Every church in the world say, the Arab from Ishmael. Why? We do not know. When the Bible says it clearly, that Hajar, when she came back, she married her son to an Egyptian woman. So how she married him to Egyptian women? Egyptian or African? Egyptian today is mixed with the Arab today because the Muslim occupy them. But in the time of Ishmael, those are pure Egyptian. They have their own language. They have nothing to do with Arab. And they are not Arab. Never. So, Egyptian family, Egyptian women, marrying her son to an Egyptian wife. How in the world he is the father of the Arab? You ask those fools how they do that. So, there's many things we need to clear when we think about the scriptures, and we should not allow Islam to mix with our belief. All right, uh, anything else? What about paying our death in the church? Yeah, why not? You support the church, why not? I'm not talking about, I'm not talking, I'm not saying don't support the church. No, no, no. I'm saying don't support a scammer. You know, we should support the church. So if we don't if we don't donate to the church, who donate? Where the money will come from? No, this is not what I said. I said there is there is men, they claim to be the men of God, and they want to get wealthy. They want to have a high salary to work as a priest. They ask for a salary, you know. A person who is serving God should not ask for a salary. People donate. Whatever they give, he is happy. But a man, he asks for a salary. He asks for, like, you know, it happened many times, like I am invited to a seminar. They asked me, is it okay if we reserve for you in Four Stars Hotel? But, uh, what? Uh, how much you charge for the seminar? Why I will charge? Why in the world I will charge? The last seminar I went to, I did not even use the water in the fridge. They told me that this room reserved in the name of the church. So don't, don't worry, anything you take from the fridge, the bill will go to us. I did not touch even the water inside. I, go, I went to McDonald's and I ate a sandwich. I know that this hotel is expensive. They will charge them God knows how much. Yeah, McDonald, Leicester Street. I went, five, six dollars, the problem solved. So, but there is men, they will not go anywhere unless you pay them a lot of money. What happened to Arab for Christ channel? It is there. What happened to it? It's there. All right. Anyone have a question? Anything else? <clears throat> Let us see. Can you explain quickly 
بتفسير of ال Samarakandi Surah Tour verse maybe next time my friend like you know we are done now uh, but we hope next as you see when you ask a Muhammadan about his religion about his prophet they don't have any answer never you know Arab for Christ 666 yeah, silly people but maybe I chose it this way because I am a person exposing the Antichrist 666 you know Mr. H is worried about the 666 <laughs> stupid people the reason we created Arab for Christ channel because Muslims they use Arabic class to convert people to Islam so I made this it's for free you can learn how to speak Arabic it doesn't cost you any money you learn how to write you learn how to read and it's for free totally for free then people they cannot follow you most time will not be able to convert you to Islam by following you about Arabic teaching Arabic they use Arabic teaching as a way to get into your head this is what they do. That's why I decided to start that channel. And I see many naive, they keep saying, how come it says 6-6? Six, six? I don't know, I don't remember how. Maybe Google suggests that, I don't know. But maybe I choose it. What, what is that a big deal for you? <laughs> what if I change the name of this channel, it says Arabian Prophet 666? I mean, people are really stupid. We are the one who is fighting against the Antichrist. And this is all what you come with? Who is the one here fighting against the Antichrist? You? You potatoes? And I will keep it there, 666. You like it or not? Drink from the ocean. Stupid people. It's not by talk. It's by action. And we are the last one who care for what people say. Our actions speak what we believe. From their fruits, you shall know them. And the dummies here and there, they don't count for us. Here, we witness thousands and thousands of Muhammadan leave Islam and accepted the Messiah. Here we see how Islam is defeated. On September 1st, all Christians apologetic meeting in recent answer channel I know you like to be alone but please come for a few minutes no I don't like to be with any apologist and uh, I'm not a fan of those uh, conferences uh, for me I don't find them useful anyway you know I find them just a waste of money and a waste of time but anyway the people do what they think is right for me I believe it's not right uh, you know the disciple of Christ each one of them he went in different direction and then at that time life is different and life is hard uh, communication is very difficult and like now you send an email after two seconds a person who live in the end of the world he will receive it even then they don't do what they are doing today and there is no need if we are really uh, uh, focus in what we do uh, let us say I want to teach uh, youth you know about something Nobody come to watch conference, really. Anyone go to watch conference? It's a waste of time. Like I saw a video made by David Wood two days ago, not uh, last two weeks ago. They have a conference. How many people watch the video? Nobody. But a short video he make, eh, 50,000 saw it. Conference, nobody go watch. So uh, those conferences, maybe they can use, be useful. Uh, but today we are in the age of the internet and in order to bring people you have to have let us say 
a kind of a relation, personal relationship with them. Not a conference for everybody. People like to be to hear their name. People like to feel that they are like uh, uh, they are exist in the, in the in, in the conversation. Like now, you say to, to me something in the chat, I respond to you. So conferences, I believe, it's a waste of time and waste of resource. Like you fly all of them coming from everywhere, sitting in a hotel, paying for food. Why? Eh, for me, I don't think it's work. But anyway. That's what they think. It might be good, and I'm wrong. Uh, all right, Mad. Good for you, my friend. We pray for you. Again, you know, everyone uh, of us, he have his own way. Uh, my way maybe is not the correct way. Maybe their way is the correct way. But I believe that all of us, we are delicious fruit in the table of the Lord. And everyone do as he think he is doing best. So I, we appreciate them for sure. Many videos in Arab for Christ were removed today. No, nothing removed. Not Arab for Christ. Maybe you are talking about different. Uh, you know, maybe you are talking about my channel here. I did took a lot of videos off. Yeah. Let me check. No, there is nothing removed. Yeah, they are there. The maybe you are confused about what channel. This channel I took videos from it. I don't keep videos on my channel. Uh, so you will find a lot of videos are gone. Yeah. All right. Anything else? Can can Shia hadith be reliable? There's nothing called reliable. You know, reliable in Islam is a moody stuff. So, as an example, the Shia don't accept Al-Bukhari unless the Bukhari support the Shia belief. Hypocrite, you know. Same as a Sunni. If the, if the Hadith of the Shia support their belief, they take it. Uh, and the, the word reliable, it's not exist in Islam. Even the Shia believe this Quran is not the true Quran. The Quran of Fatima is a true Quran, which is Al, uh, Al Mahdi. He took it with him in the cave, which is a fiction story. Okay, anything else? If only I had known the uh, teaching of CP from a long time ago, I would have to proclaim the truth to my family well now you know now you are learning now we have books we have videos and you know I saw Sahih Shia Hadith saying the Quran originally had 17,000 verse well we have Sahih Hadith from Omar saying the Quran was a million and twenty-five thousand verse. A million. Hmm? Yeah. Which is obviously maybe more than ninety percent of it is gone. <clears throat> but you know, for me, I don't care really how much Quran is gone. What we care for is what is left over. What is left over Actually, I don't care to say to Muslims, your Quran is corrupt. That will not help me in nothing, you know. I prefer that Muslims who believe Quran never corrupt, or then they have no excuse. In fact, you will notice, since like maybe six, seven years ago, the Muslims, when they are in the corner, they start saying, oh, this verse is not cannot be from the Quran, it's corrupted. 
Why do they do that? So they can escape the proof that Islam is false. So for me, I don't focus in the corruption of the Quran because it doesn't help. And I mean, how you can corrupt a corrupt anyway? All right. You see, when the Muslim they speak about the Bible corruption, we laugh because either the Quran speak against that. Uh, you know, and the whole idea of corruption in the Bible is very funny because how in the world the Christians agree around the world to corrupt one book? That, who who will believe in that? Who who will accept anyway? How you can make? Hundreds of millions agree to corrupt a book. Remember, Christianity spread everywhere from the beginning. So we have the Ethiopian from the early churches. We have Indian early churches. We have the Greek. We have the Syrian. We are talking about different nations. They speak different languages different territory far from each other how they can agree to corrupt their book and why in the world people who died for their faith they will corrupt their book who in the world want to believe in such a thing that is a very stupid statement but because they don't know what to do their prophet obviously is false and they need to find him here they cannot find him They cannot find him in the Bible. That's the whole idea. If the name of Muhammad is exist in the Bible, they will say it's a good book. Please answer me, my brother. What is time education? What do you want? I did not see your question. I'm going back in the text. I don't see any question from you. Anyone see a question from Islam education? I don't see. Why are Christian not being Christians? That's a very funny statement. Who is the one who says so? What 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 make a Christian not a Christian? You cannot be Christian and not a Christian at the same time, either a Christian or not. Why Christian be not Christian? That is very silly. If you don't follow Jesus, you are no Christian. If you follow Jesus, you are Christian. So how do you say why Christian are not Christians? No, I don't have this code. If you are saying why some people who have a Christian names, they don't act like Christians. What well, they are not Christians. Christians is not a name, only it's a person who live as a Christian. Isn't it Jesus says, not everyone says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of my Father, but the one who does his will? Ah, very simple. There is many people in this earth. There is many. They live for themselves. They never do good to the Lord. They never try to help even a person who serves the Lord. Everything you do, present who you are. For us, the Bible means basic information before leaving earth. What is the meaning of the Quran? Uh, you know, I understand like people, they say those things like the Bible is basic information before leaving the earth, but I don't agree. The Bible is not information. It's not. It's very wrong to say such a statement. It's just like, uh, it's just like a guideline. No. The Bible is a living story of the living God. When we say the Gospel of John, speaking of what? Speaking of Jesus coming to this earth. 
that is not a basic information. That is the living God who come to this earth and we live through his life by his living word. He said, the earth and the heaven will be demolished, will be destroyed, but my word will not. So never disrespect the word of the Lord and say it's a basic information. It's not. Christianity is a life, is not a yellow pages, is not instructions. It's a life you live. Do you, do you understand? Did you, did you ask yourself why the Bible says in the beginning it was the Word and the Word was with God and then the Word became a flesh? Why the Word? What is the secret of the Word? For the Word is not a basic information. The Word is God Himself. God and His Word is not different. You know the you know you know you know who you worship by knowing the word, and that is Jesus. The word became a flesh. So the word which is the Messiah is not a basic information, is the living God, the walking, talking, living Messiah. Uh, I was very upset about is it true that the key holder of the resurrection church in Jerusalem is Muslim? Yes, true. But now it's like, you know, this is since the, the Muslim, they occupy Jerusalem. And the Israeli government, they support the Muslim to keep the key with them. Just to let you know. The Israeli government actually, they give the Muslims a charge and then now of a lot of our churches since the time of Omar, they did not bring them back to the Christians. Christians cannot have them back. The Muslims are in control in Jerusalem and then now. And the reason for that, because the, the, the Israeli government, Jews, they don't want the Christians to be even in Jerusalem. In fact, they prefer to have Muslims in Jerusalem, but not the Christians. Why? Because a lot of Jews are converting to Christianity. So, in other hand, let us say they are still acting as Antichrist. They never change. And I'm talking about those who reject Jesus. If Muhammad is a lost prophet, what is the reason for Muslims waiting for the Mahdi? Mahdi is just a fiction story. There is no such a thing, you know. Mahdi is just another legend. A woman, her name is Maryam. She resembled Jesus, uh, mother, Mary. She gave birth to a guy from her thigh, not from her vagina. I mean, it's just a stupid story. Islam is full of stupid stories. None of them is, uh, you know, uh, and what, what this Mahdi would do exactly. And, what, and this Mahdi, he came and then he hide in the cave and then he will come back with the true Quran. What a story. Uh, never believe in such a garbage. Mahdi. What he would do exactly, this Mahdi? I mean, how the Muslim they say, that Muhammad is the last prophet, and then there's a guy, his name is Mahdi, which means the guide, in the guidance. That means a prophet. <laughs> All right, anything else? The Mahdi, when he was born, when he fell in his ass, he never, he never cried. He said, Alhamdulillah. The Mahdi, when he is baby, when he fart, his fart is musk. When people, they smell his fart, they praise Allah. The Mahdi, he never, I mean, those are, you know, stories for the, 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 the gullible ones. You know, the, the kind of people who believe anything. 
Did the story of Mahdi even appear in the Sunni Islam? Yes, there is very few stories about the Sun in the Sunni about the Mahdi. But the Muslims are not too much interested in the Mahdi. The Shia are the one who they are, you know, and they have a lot of fiction stories about it. Uh, you know, the, the Mahdi is a, you know, it's like a way of deception, like wait for something to happen. It, it's like to give you hope, you know, it's like uh, tomorrow. It's the same as anything in the Middle East. And by the way, already there's many Mahdis, they came. There's the Mahdi who occupied the Kaaba, if you remember. I think this was a long time ago. Uh, he occupied the Kaaba and uh, uh, the Saudi, uh, uh, they asked the American Marines uh, to help them to take over the Kaaba. Uh, and then there's many Mahdi came in Iraq, uh, many Mahdi in Egypt, many Mahdi in Turkey, Many Mahdi everywhere. If I go right now, type the word Mahdi. There is a there is a sheikh right now. Actually, he announced himself as a Mahdi. This is a few years ago, and he have a lot of supporters. Uh, let him see. Uh, just to show you. Like even Mirza Ghulam, he he claimed that he is the Mahdi and he is the Messiah in the same time. Uh, like you see, I just type in uh, in Google. There's tons of men claiming to be the Mahdi. Let me use Google translation. All those videos speaking about people who now in our lifetime claim to be the Mahdi. All right. Do you see it? Th those things you see them in the Middle East every, you know, uh, every almost every month or every year or you know, yeah. There's tons of Mahdi's. Hey, everybody is Mahdi, and you know the gullible one. They believe anything. It's like you know Ahmad Mirza Ghulam when he claimed that he is the Messiah, but he was Mary for three years. I mean, he changed his gender. Imagine he was Mary. For three years, and then after three years, he became Christ, and he was the Mahdi in the same time. So the Christian they come to Ahmad Mirza Ghulam, and they told him, "Okay, you are the Messiah, as you claim. Then do what the Messiah does." They brought him. He, you know, he opened his door in the morning. He found like fifty, sixty. Uh, uh, Disabled person, blind, all kind of illness, you know. Uh, he said, what is this? He said, aren't you the Messiah? Well, do what the Messiah does. Heal them. He closed his door and he went inside again. He cannot. Uh, here we go. Suddenly the, the Messiah, he is in India. Can he speak Urdu? And he have an Indian father, and he was married for three years, and then brother, uh, now this guy in the middle, he is the one the caliphate of the Mahdi. The Mahdi, uh, sorry, the uh, Ahmad Mirza is the one with the black and white picture. Yeah, I mean you can, uh, and the British intelligence they supported him, and then the guy he have a sect, and the whole idea is to make his followers join the British army. Very simple. No. Yeah. And now there's many, I don't know how many million, 50 million, 40 million, I'm not sure. They believe in him. But the irony is, when you ask the Muhammadan, uh, how many Muslims is, they count everybody. They count even the Mahdi, uh, uh, sorry, the Ahmadiyya people. And then this guy, he died because of diarrhea. He was infected with cholera. I know there's a Mahdi in Sudan, there's a Mahdi everywhere. But the funny is this guy who claimed to be the Messiah, he died literally because of shit. 
he have non-stop diarrhea caused his death. I mean, imagine you claim to be the Messiah and then you die because of diarrhea. That is really horrible. <laughs> the Messiah who can heal millions of people, you know, how you are the Messiah, okay, can't you stop even the diarrhea? And not only that, they say that he fell down from his bed over his shit. Because he keep having the area, they have like a container underneath of him. So when he died, he fell from his bed over his shit. They took him literally from his shit. And then the Ahmadiyya, they say in their website, that uh, uh, that was not a proof of anything. You know, which means they admit this is what happened. He died because of the area. He fell over his shit. Uh, what do you mean this is not a proof of anything? And you will find actually the same story of Muhammad. What is the last thing Muhammad he did? Anyone remember before he died? Anyone remember? He asked Aisha for the dish to piss. He pissed and he died. Someone asking how you explain predestination. We Christians don't believe in predestination, even if the word mentioned in the Bible, but it does not mean what it sounds. Predestination in the Bible is about the following. You did not choose to be Adam. God destiny for you to be created as Adam. I'm talking about Adam, the first man. God uh, told Adam, don't do this, don't do that. That is a, not a choice, which means this is a destiny. Which means if you do this, you go to hell. If you do that, you stay in heaven. That's it. This is the only destiny we have. So when the Bible says that I choose you before you choose me, because God, he chose people first, and he get them tested. You will find in the Bible that Abraham being tested, Paul being tested, all the disciples of Jesus being tested. So they are chosen, yes, but they've been tested. So if God had chose me, to be serving him. Still, I have to be tested and pass. Even Israel, what the name of Israel? It's about a person who was tested. So the predestiny in the Bible have nothing to do with the predestiny in Islam. Predestiny, even the chosen one, the very elect, they will be tested. Starting from Adam, ending by you and me. I hope I explained to you. When the Messiah uh, said, not everyone says to me, Lord, Lord, but the one who do his will. What does that mean? It means your will, you know, you voluntarily do the will of God. If you do your own will against the will of God, then you don't go to heaven. Uh, is it okay not to eat pork? Who cares about what you eat? The Lord, he says, is not what go inside your mouth, it is what come from your mouth. That is important. If you eat pork and you speak good, who care? If you eat even shit and you are a good person, I mean, who? what the business of anyone? So my friend, the wisdom is, when the Old Testament forbid pork, that was for a reason. There's animals who eat anything and nobody knows what they are eating. So they can transmit diseases. At that time, people can kill, get killed and thrown in the. Even they have in next to Jerusalem, the Roman used to crucify people and throw them there. They throw them there, and dogs and pigs and etc. come and eat them. So it was for a reason. Uh, but it's not because it's a pig, but because of what they eat. However, it's not food what will make you a good person. Food never made good people. To make it simple for you, chicken eat shit. We eat chicken. As simple as that. You like it or not, it's true. So, are you going to stop eating chicken? For sure you will not. Even tomato, vegetables, do you know how they grow? They put fertilizer for them, and the best fertilizer is shit. Excuse my language. 
vegetables, they flourish if you give them poop. Is that correct? So, only naive ones, they think that the food is what makes you a good person. Food is about health. It's not about you being a good person. If a man is homeless, homeless, he did not take a shower for a month. He don't have food. I mean, he don't have a house. Okay, what he would do? Is he, you can imagine how bad his smell. If I bring you such a man, and I bring you a priest, and the priest, he is so clean, or a sheik, so clean, so neat, shampoo, perfume, but he's a child molester, he's a liar, he's a scammer. Which one is better? The homeless who harm nobody? Nobody. This is why he's homeless, actually. If he is a scammer, he will not be homeless. <laughs> uh, can confirm, but shared account will also make good fertilizer. I'm not sure what does that mean. Shredded, uh, shredded coconut. Ah, sorry, sorry. Shredded coconut. Ah, uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I don't live in the Philippines to know about coconut. Uh, but anyway, uh, it's only naive ones. They think that food will make you a better person. It doesn't. It's about health. If I can eat good food, healthy food, that will make me. A better chance to have a healthy body. But a person who is being good or bad, what does have to do with food? How many of you, your own children, betray you? Your children, they ate with you. They ate, they ate from your from your from your uh, breast. They 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 you know they drink your drunk your milk. Uh, you fed them. They were in your womb for nine months. They betray you. What does this have to do with good and bad? All right. Never think about God. You know, in a in a in a, in a like an earthy way. He, he doesn't, you know, I mean, uh, are we really clean? If you take a shower, you know, like the Muslim, they do evolution. And this is something they took from other people. If I take a shower from now until tomorrow, non-stop, isn't it true that in my stomach there is something not right? We, we, we agree, right? This is what a living body is. You know, you go to pee, when you have a lot of pee, not because you don't have no more pee, like when you pee, it doesn't mean everything is gone. You, it's still your body inside, you smell bad. Is you know, If you open what is inside your body, you will get disgusted yourself. So the word the clean, it's not really about cleaning of the body. Because it doesn't matter what you do, your body cannot be clean. Your tongue is more filthy than a toilet seat, full of bacteria. Your body is full of bacteria, useful or bad. So, no human can be clean, and will never be clean. The only thing can make you clean is being clean from sin. The rest is the last thing God is worried about. Clean your tongue, clean your thought, clean your mind, clean your you know your 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 uh, your purpose of life. This is what make you clean. It's not a food. If you start thinking this way, you will live like a Jew or like the Muslims. They are obsessed 
with rules and they think that this is the best way it is uh, they, they take the words in the Bible literally you know uh, but they don't really follow the Bible as an example you know if uh, uh, there is many there is a list of food in the Old Testament is forbidden which one is more ugly to lend people money and take interest or to eat pork which one is doing harm you give people money and then you ask them for a lot of interest destroying their future the person is desperate for money he needs money he will need to borrow he borrow from you you say to him i will charge you 30 percent 40 percent interest so which one is the ugly one the one who eat pork or the one who take interest and suck the blood of people you i'm sure you know the answer In fact, for me, I would be worried to have a friend. He is so he claimed to be religious by so being so strict with food. That is a bad sign for me. The good sign is he is so strict with behavior, not food. Behavior, how he treat people, how he deal with people, how he deal with the money how he help, how he uh, is humble, how he is uh, uh, trustworthy. His food is not my business. What people eat in their dishes is not my business. All right? Uh, <clears throat> always, you know, always, I find that always, uh, uh, People who claim to, to be religious, uh, they are hypocrite. You notice that they're hypocrite because they focus too much on uh, food. Like he want to show you that he is really a religious person. So what he do? He he show you that he is fasting. He show you that he is uh, uh, following the command of God. That's why Jesus said, if you fast. Put water in your face and don't let people know. Why people need to know that you are fasting? So you notice that the Pharisees, who they are very supposedly religious, they fast and they tell everybody, everybody should know, the same as the Muslims, that they are fasting. You want to pray? They pray in the corner. So everybody knows that they are praying. And the Muslims do the same, amazingly. The Messiah, he warned us not to be like them. Never be. So when, uh, uh, when somebody claims to be religious and he is so much focusing on the food, I believe he is not focusing on God. God first, people first, love your neighbors as you love yourself, love your enemy, not what you eat, what make you good, what come from your mouth, not what go inside your mouth, all right? <clears throat> all right. I think we have enough for today. How you know how how I can be good by fasting? Fasting is for my best, for my to control myself, to learn how to fight temptation, maybe. But it's not about you. Fasting is not for God. You don't fast for God. What does that have to do with your fasting? Anything you do, actually, you don't do it for God. You do it for yourself.
But the difference is, I have intention to help you. But by helping you, my intention is not to help me, is to help you. So by helping you, I'm helping myself. How? As the Bible says, when you did it for me, you did it for me, uh, you did it for them. You know, when Jesus says, I was hungry, I was thirsty, I was a prisoner, I was a stranger, you took me in. He said, Lord, when we did this to you, he said, when you do it to my brothers, you do it to me. So the intention is to do it to the brothers. By doing it to the brother, because you love to do it, not because you want to go to heaven, but because you are selfish, you like to be with Jesus only. You're not doing it because you like it. You don't donate because you want to donate, but because you want to go to heaven. If you donate for that purpose, you are not going to heaven. Simply, you are just a fraud, trying to bribe God. You think you can fool him. You are just acting. You don't believe in it. A believer is someone he gives donation from his heart, but not he is not thinking about if I give donation, I go to heaven. A person who helps a poor person because he is convinced as a Christian, I should help this poor. Not because if I help him, I will go to heaven. So your intention should be doing good, for you are following the good God. From their fruits you shall know them. If you do good, for your benefit so you help somebody because you think that will do you a favor to go to heaven that is a fraud a Christian is a person who do uh, do any best he can to help others based on love love to them not love to himself and then, because he is providing love, love come back. The intention of a Christian man give definition of he is a Christian or not, or a woman. If a woman, she love her son, because her son one day will grow, and then he will support her and pay the bills. She don't love him. She's investing. This is not love. She is just investing. That the son one day will grow and he will become a man and then he will pay. But if she is doing whatever she can, regardless if her son one day will support her or not, that means she loves him. And that is the love we are talking about. A love with no return speaking. Same as Jesus. He did not ask for return. Nothing. Uh, what does it mean to be filled by the Spirit? It's exactly what we just uh, just said, Maggie. If you are filled with the Spirit, the Spirit of love, you give the Spirit of love a fruit. So, if like, we are the Christian, why we believe in born again? What born again mean? You are born again with the new living, let us say, target. So the Spirit will be with you, within you, the Holy Spirit, and you will be acting based on that. You have, you see, you as an animal, a human being is an animal and a human at the same time, which means when you have a soul, you are just an animal. When you have the Holy Spirit, you are a human being. The animal, he acts to survive. He acts for his own pleasure. People go to night club for what? They want to have fun. He's not going there to do charity. A person who has the Spirit, he might go in front of night club to preach. <laughs> so, both of us, we are going to night club. But one is going there to save the losers, and one is going there to be a loser. Are you with me? So we can be going to the same exact place, but yet we have totally the opposite mission. 
You can be a preacher going to an area full of prostitutes. And your target is to speak to them. Or you can be a person who is looking for a prostitute. Both are men going to the same place. What, the, what make the difference is what the target of each man is. One, he want to have sex. And the one, other one, he want to preach to them. So can we say they are both the same? Uh, uh, thank you, Maggie. I don't have a ministry. I'm nobody. You know, people they keep saying you your ministry. I'm not. I'm not a priest. I'm not a. You know, I'm, I'm nobody. I'm just like you. Uh, I do my best to understand and to explain. I don't have any ministry. I'm not a minister. I'm not a priest. I don't claim to be any any title to me. Actually, I. I refuse to be given any of those titles. I don't deserve them. I don't deserve any of those nice titles. Minister, ministry. I'm not. You know, I don't deserve them. Uh, help me with Ezekiel. Well, my friend, I mean, why it's... Uh, what, what do you mean, help me with Ezekiel? Uh, how, how come a person here read the Gospel or uh, Old Testament and then he stuck only with the last verse. If you read the chapter, the last verse explained by the chapter itself. Did you jump to the last verse without reading the first verses and the second verses and the third verses? Read them. At the same time, there's a commentary for all those verses in the Bible. You know, I, I cannot believe really there is somebody he need to understand a verse in the Bible and he is so much desperate to know it and he did not search the internet for what it's meant. If you go there, you will find it's talking about repenting and how the children of Israel, they are worshipping wrong gods. You know? Uh, uh, and who is the one who will be saved and how they can be saved? So how come we stuck at the end? There is men in the Old Testament, their name is mentioned. And because they did a great service, they will be delivered. I don't know why it's hard. You know, like, is it surprised to say that Noah is delivered? Is it hard to say that Job is delivered? That's why God, He, you know, He chosen them and He tested them. Uh, there is a Hindu priest in India saying originally the Kaaba was built by Hindus in Mecca. Maybe you know, when somebody says something, he have to provide uh, some evidence. But it's highly possible that the Kaaba have a root of the Hindus. Because the black stone is a fertility stone. The Muslims, uh, they wear the same clothing like the Hindu priest. If you go right now check Hindu priest or Buddha priest, you will see they show the same shoulder, they wear the same sheet, they wear the same sandals, and they shave their head. It's exactly the same. Which branch of a Christianity? There's a branches in Christianity. Christianity is following Jesus. Anything else is not Christianity. So the one who follow branches, not Jesus, is no Christian. What branches? I follow Christ. I don't follow a priest. And the church fathers never have a branch. Never. We are Christians. That's what the Bible calls us. No other name. The first name given to us in the Bible is a Christian. 
And the Messiah, he said, whoever believe in me and I will live. Whoever believe in me, whoever, no church name. And for sure, we cannot quote this verse alone. We have to quote the rest. Whoever believe in me, whoever do as I say, whoever follow my command, whoever walk my walk, whoever cover my cross, whoever obey the Father, he will live. Only naive ones, they focus on names of the churches. You know, smart Christian, he will not care if it is whatever name it is. The important is, from their fruits you shall know them. This is why we always we should know that we should not follow a priest. And this is why I keep saying, don't say to me, your, your ministry or your minister. Or sometimes people call me a pastor or CP. I'm not. Because the second you make a person, give him a title, you give him a title, that title can be dangerous. That title can make a new school of thoughts. That's why I don't, I, I, I don't, I don't like those titles. Jehovah's Witnesses and Mormon are not Christians. Very simple. They are just Jehovah's Witnesses. They don't have. They don't even know who's Jehovah. Same as the Mormon and the cult. All right. Uh, Maggie, oh, okay, you said CP is humble and good, which means you fight Islam. Oh, and why you are focusing on Maggie? Have you? That's it, you don't see anyone in the chat except Maggie? Uh, hope you see this and can answer me. When the second commandment says about not making images of God, then why uh, some churches they do uh, have them on the cross? But as I said, uh, people have different opinion, right? But the Bible is so clear: you make no image. And those images is images to worship. So if you make images to worship the image, it's against the Bible. If you make image, eh? Let us say, you know, in the old days, uh, when somebody passed away, uh, the family, they look for someone who is an artist, who knows the person who passed away, and they ask him to draw him. There is no photography. So drawing was a way uh, of remembrance of the one who is missed. So if this is the purpose, no problem. If you draw a picture of someone you love, no problem. But if you worship an image, that is idolatry. So we Christian we refuse any images to be worshipped. However, some churches, they have images. And I believe if they are art, or to explain the Bible, or to preserve the Bible, as they used to do, uh, making a mosaic, like uh, small rocks, very wonderful. But if we start kissing the images, crying in front of the images, this is a this is a sign of uh, uh, ignorance, and we should not do that. Especially in those images, they don't they don't even match the one. They have not no we like we do not know how Mary looked like, and even if we know how it looked like, why why we need the picture of Mary? What for? So I'm against all kinds of those images, unless they are just for the sake of art. Anyway, different person, he can say to you the opposite. And he can give you some reference from the Old Testament, 
that even when they build a temple, they have images of the cherubim and the angels, etc. Uh, but still, they don't have them to worship and to pray in front of them. And you know, for me, I give my opinion, and I don't care really who accept or don't. I say it as it is. Anything else? And remember, you know, remember all of us that we, as a human, the 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 smart of us is the fool. To make it simple, the more you think you are smart, the more obviously you are a foolish person. Because, uh, you know, our intelligence is really limited and our knowledge is limited. And because of the limitation, our ability is always limited. So when we, when we try our best, uh, let us say, to live as a Christian, each one of us, he have different ability. Different ability to read, ability to understand, ability to comprehend, ability uh, to uh, to feel it. Uh, every one of us, he live in different house, different family, different culture. Uh, we have different ages. So when you are a kid, when you are a teenager, you see something, you understand it differently. You like a music today, tomorrow you don't like it. If I play for you music you used to listen to it when you are a teenage today and you are 70, you will laugh at yourself. So human being, he go through a process. It's like a bread going in the oven. You are a dog, you are a flower, mixed with water, and then they knee you, and then they make you round, and then they make you flat, whatever, and then they put you in the oven, and then you became delicious. So before you become delicious, you wear all kinds of things which is not good to eat. Nobody would like to eat flour. It is so bad. Nobody would like to eat dough. It is so ugly. But everybody likes to eat bread. So in order to become a bread, you have to go through all kinds of ugly taste. That is you and me. So through life, we taste all kinds of ugly stuff. We go through sin, we go through wrong, we go through bad, we go through bad, good. Uh, some of us, we are unlucky, born in bad society, bad family maybe. Uh, but they go through different experience. This is why God, He don't judge a, a group, He judge individuals. For every individual, he go through his own process, his own experience. And this is why in Christianity, God is a special God for each one of us. There is a personal relationship. This is why when we pray, we call him Father. When you are the Father, you have many kids. Each one of them is different. There's one of them is so smart. There's one of them is so so. There's one of them is so slow. There's some one of them is crazy. But still, because you are the father, you love them all. The one who have a mental issue, you try to help him based on his mental issue. The one who is so smart, you deal with him based on his intelligence. He's so smart. He do not need too much care. This is why Jesus said, I came for the sick, not for the healthy. So who is the one who needs the care? The sick. Which means to make it simple for you. In Christianity, God, he cares more for the sick. Because those are the one need care. Those are the one need help. Are you with me? In Islam is the opposite. Allah love not those who don't worship Him. 
Allah hate those who don't accept him. Christianity is the opposite. God, he come for those who hate him. It's totally the opposite. Christ is your the rescue for the sick one. Is the ambulance for the sick one. Allah is the poison. He want to kill them. He want to torture them, fight them, find them. For he is a beast. He have no mercy. He have no love in his heart. He is just a beast. Christ, he love to help. Even those who hate him most. Paul himself, he used to go after the Christians. He hate Jesus. He want to go and find whoever believe in Jesus. And then Paul become Paul. So if Jesus did not come for the sick, Paul, when he was sick, he would not be saved. And each one of us have something sick inside him. Our greed, temptation, selfishness, arrogant, proud. I mean, you name it. It's endless. You will see a family, they are in love together until one day the parents died. Suddenly the brothers and sisters, they are literally biting each other like dogs over money. Love is gone. Money is here. Adam is life now. It is good to talk to him. I don't know who is Adam. You mean Adam Seeker? Yeah, he's a good man. You can go onto his channel. All right. I hope I answered you. And you know, I do my best to share with you how I think. But always think about God as our Lord. He is a rescuer. He is the one who is watching the beach, who is drowning. But in order to be saved, you have to give him your hand up. So if you decide to become a Hindu, or decide to become a, 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 a following the, the Satan Muhammad, you are free. You can go anywhere you want. But if you feel you are drowning, you better shout to him. He said, knock at my door and I will open for you. Call me and I will answer. So you are drowning in the water. You better put your hand up, ask for help, and he will be there. But if you ask the wrong person to help you, well, it's your fault. You ask Muhammad, you end with Muhammad. You ask Jesus, you end with Jesus. You eat from what you cook and you harvest what you plant. Thank you all for being here. I hope today we have a good time. And I will see you soon again. May the Lord bless you. Christ is Lord. Islam is a scam. And we prove it every day. Thank you. Take care.